This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and Bespoke Post. It's a pretty terrible time right now for just about everything. But on the other hand, it's a great time for people who are into ingesting disgusting beverages. Mm. For example, if you're into Mountain Dew, and I know you are, yeah. you know, Mountain Dew, the heavily caffeinated, sugar packed, neon colored beverage enjoyed by gamers and extreme athletes worldwide. The original G Fuel. Mm hmm. If you're into Mountain Dew, congratulations. You now have yet another Mountain Dew variant to go right there alongside Baja Blast, Code Red, Live Wire, Game Fuel, Game Blast, Voltage, Whiteout, Electric Apple, Solar Flare, and all the many other flavors. They of sound Mountain like Dew. fucking superheroes. They do. Like uh, Whiteout is the one that does cocaine. Mm hmm. <laughs> and uh, though Mountain Dew has had an alarming number of flavors and colors over the years, for the first time ever, Mountain Dew comes with a little bit of booze in it. Finally! Thank God. Now, sorry, son. Uh, the new Mountain Dew Garita. It's available at Red Lobster only, and it is for dads only. Sorry, son. That's right. Uh, fans of margaritas and Mountain Dew will soon have an unholy alliance of flavors to wash that all-you-can-eat Cheddar Bay biscuit dish down with. Now, those of us who have long felt that margaritas simply are not green enough can finally feel vindicated knowing that this is as green as a margarita could possibly be. Yeah. It's like a cocktail from Fallout. Like, yeah. it glows. It essentially glows. You can turn the lights out. I mean, it looks radioactive. It does. <laughs> and it's probably just as healthy as that. <laughs> as for how the Dew Garita actually tastes and how similar or different it is to Mountain Dew's existing flavors, well, the press release says that the recipe is top secret, but they do say that it's refreshingly fun. They don't even say what kind of liquor's in it. Imagine There's how, a lot of mystery here. Look, if you're gonna get a DUI, this has got to be the most embarrassing drink to yeah. get a DUI. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm so, fine, officer. I only had like three Dugaritas down at the Red Lobster. <laughs> well, I still isn't that right, son? <laughs> My son wanted one, and I was like, no, you you wait till you're old. You drink the Code Red. I drink the Dugarita. <laughs> what are you in for? Too many Dugaritas. It's fine. The the extreme amount of caffeine and sugar in the Dew counteracts. The alcohol, the, the mystery alcohol in the Dugarita, I am fine. The lobster. problem with the Dugarita is that you're going to have people like trying to grab lobsters out of that giant tank out front because mm -hmm. they're feeling a little bit feisty. Feeling extreme. Yeah, the Dugarita belongs on the slopes or, or the mountain bike trails or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a skate park. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you get... Uh, the Dugarita is for moms who have to take their kids to the skate park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's for the moms and the, well, not the kids. The, the kids will steal the moms' do Yeah, you a do for you, a do for me, mm -hmm. and I'm going to put a little something a special. A do for all me. ages. Yeah. And I, I don't know if they do or they don't, but uh, you should really get some Call of Duty XP with every do Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. The COD XP fair. bonus points. That's like, that's half the reason anyone even drinks this shit to begin with, is mm -hmm. to level up. Anyways, a big question that we have about this drink, other than, you know, what's in it, and what it tastes like is, what exactly is that red stuff around the rim? Is that salt mixed with flaming Hot Cheeto dust? That seems like something they might do. It, it, the only thing that's upsetting me is the fact that it's not crushed up Doritos. It could be. It could be crushed up Doritos, Cheetos, anything like that. It's a little too red for that. I don't know. It does look know. like flaming Hot Cheeto dust. It does. Yeah. It does. And uh, so the press release for the Dew Garita says that this collab is actually just the first of many. PepsiCo and Red Lobster, quote, will leverage their iconic food and beverage brands to create a variety of craveable new menu items, starting with the Dew Garita, the first official Mountain Dew cocktail. And they say that this will include not only just beverages from PepsiCo's holdings, but also products across all of PepsiCo's vast holdings, including Frito-Lay and the Quaker range of products. Oh, want, a Dew Garita with some oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, beer battered uh, Quaker oats, fish and chips. Mm. I mean, Doritos... And I think Cheetos are Frito Lay. They I know for a fact that Doritos are. Yeah, they they. Uh, well, that's the whole reason that like Taco Bell got the Doritos logos. Because they have Pepsi, Pepsi owns all that shit. Yeah. So uh, just think of all the possibilities. Is, is this the crossover that finally gets it right? Yeah, I think that it might be. Although you won't see me anywhere near Red Lobster anytime I'm soon. I'm not sure I've ever eaten. I, I, oh, I went to Red Red Lobster on homecoming dance night in high school. It was the fanciest place in Sarasota. That you could take your date I'm gonna to. I'm going to take my date to a nice Red Lobster dinner. They're going to put the bib on both of us. <laughs> She's going to love it. Yeah, well, by the time I had finished all the cheddar biscuits, I wasn't mm -hmm. I, I, oh, God. ready to go to sleep. I've had a week's worth of sodium. <laughs> <laughs> they are good, though. Yeah, well, anyways, I 
I don't know if as an adult I would ever visit a Red Lobster ever I, again. I can't see it. Like, if I'm going to eat seafood, I'm going to go to an actual seafood restaurant. Oh, rich ass? I mean, it's not cheap. That's why it's like, it's a special event. Like, Red Lobster is trying to, like, cheat the system by being like, hey, you want a fancy seafood meal, but you want to pay, like, dirt cheap prices for that seafood? Also, the byproduct of that is that the food's not very good. Mm -hmm. But it's a seafood meal. Yeah. It's like uh, it's Sizzler's the other one. It's like, oh, you can get a lobster for like $5. It's like, okay, you, buddy. You, okay, enjoy your $5 lobster. I mean, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, meanwhile, the undisputed king of incorporating convenience store snack food into the menu is, of course, as we just said, Taco Bell. Home of the Doritos Logos Tacos, which I, are pretty fucking good. I think they took those off the menu, though. No, they, I think they might have slimmed it down, because I, I order from Taco Bell more than I should, and I always I always throw in one Doritos Locos Taco, because I go they're that good. once a year, and I immediately know why I never go. Because I, I get a hankering for it. Mm -hmm. Like, once a year, I'm like, I, there, there's one not too far from here. And yeah. I was, like, walking home one day, and I was like, oh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going out for a nice yeah. long walk. Taco Bell's right there. It's Maybe it's as good as I remember it to be, because you always think things well, are better the, in your the head. The walking is a bad idea, because you're, you're going to be shaking all that stuff up inside you. No, I'm talking immediately home. after I finish the last bite, I feel like, like shit. Yeah, no, I, I, or, I, I get Taco Bell like once a month. And you got to be drunk. It's always when I'm drunk, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to feel like shit in the morning anyway. Let's really fucking, let's go for it. Not to turn this into an entire fast food thing, but the spicy nuggets, the new ones from McDonald's, pretty good. All right, pretty well, good. Anyway, back to Taco Bell. Yeah. In addition to the Doritos Locos Taco, mm -hmm. a, a brilliant collab. It's also the only place that you can get Mountain Dew Baja Blast outside of its limited edition releases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, there's a Mountain Dew Discord where people keep track of all these limited edition Dew drops. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, they've got fans. Uh, there's also a Mountain Dew Wiki that keeps track of all these. I want to get there's invited a to the Mountain Dew Discord just so I have more emotes to use across the entire platform. It's literally, you just go to discord.gg slash dew is, I think... <laughs> How you get there? Okay. Uh, anyways, unlike Red Lobster, Taco Bell's going in the opposite direction with their latest culinary innovation, a custom limited edition red wine called Jalapeno Noir. Jesus. Meant to pair perfectly with Taco Bell's new toasted cheesy chalupa. I mean, we all know that wine goes best with cheese, and Jalapeno Noir, which is listed as being from Cheesy Chalupa Estates, according to its label, <laughs> has been formulated to complement the flavor of the toasted cheesy chalupa's six-month aged sharp cheddar. So, you know, dare I say... Sounds like a match made in heaven. Dare I say, politics aside, the news this week has been getting better and better. We've got all the cool new shows coming out. You got mm -hmm. Mandalorian. You got Fargo. Yeah. You got WandaVision. You got these new food things that everyone's getting excited about. Yeah. Uh, 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 Logan Paul's fighting Floyd Mayweather. Which, oh, he's going to get the shit kicked out of him. What is he doing? It's time for good news, and I'm here for I it. I want to see it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, from the press release about the wine, quote, wine and cheese are simply meant to be together. So launching a new wine to go with the craveable, cheddary, toasted, cheesy chalupa made perfect sense, said Kat Garcia, director of brand marketing. At Taco Bell Canada, we love to raise our glass to big, bold ideas that elevate our menu items. And pairing our toasted, cheesy chalupa with this jalapeno noir is no exception. So, yeah, hold on. That, what's this about Taco Bell Canada? Mm. Well, yeah, uh, it looks like Jalapeno Noir is exclusive to the Great White North. And there's no plans currently to release it here in the United States. Boo. So we're going to need to get a smuggler chain going back yeah, and forth. I want that wine. And I mean, I guess it's fair. Taco Bell Red Wine is a reward for a functioning society. And, and we don't deserve that yet. Yeah, we haven't earned the Taco Bell Jalapeno Noir wine. And you know what? We're going to have to get some of that wine here. Because there is no one that I can think that would do a better job at tasting both the Dugarita and the Jalapeno Noir than uh, that fucking kid. <laughs> oh, review of the week? Review yeah. bra? Yeah, review bra. I don't know if he's ever reviewed alcohol before. I don't even know if he's tasted alcohol before. He, he puts Seems water, like a teetotaler. He puts water into cocktail glasses. So, you know, why has he yeah. got the cocktail glasses? Yeah, I don't know. It would be funny to see him get... A little bit sloshed off the top. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to. He can spit it back out. Yeah, like a real that's, wine yeah, taster. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Probably for the best too. It's probably uh, yeah, the word jalapeno in the in a wine. That sounds sounds like it's gonna be tough on the, the old stomach. I like the spicy beers that uh, have popped up in the past. I like them too, but I feel like shit afterwards every single time. Yeah, the older I get, the more uh, heartburn and indigestion. Yeah, I'm, I'm sensitive. I've yeah. gone soft. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we don't deserve that. 
unfortunately. We haven't earned it. Hopefully we do in the future because I, I genuinely do want to try the Taco Bell wine. But here's the drink we do deserve. A new blackberry lavender flavored drink from PepsiCo called Driftwell that's basically an antidepressant in a can. Wow, cool. <laughs> do you find yourself lying in bed at 3 a.m. wide awake because you live in a hellscape that only gets worse with each passing day and also because you drank six cans of Mountain Dew the day before? Well, Driftwell's for you. It contains L-theanine, an amino acid found in tea and mushrooms that mm -hmm. is often taken for stress relief and mental health, as well as magnesium, which is often taken as a sleep aid. Now, some have argued that Driftwell is a terrible name and that they would have been smarter to name it something like Pepsi, Pepsi-Coma, Melatonin Dew, oh, something cool. like that. Yeah. But Driftwell it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, in these in these trying times, reach for a calming can of Driftwell to make you forget the world around you. Those ingredients are like what they have. Uh, I have these melatonin melatonin gummies if I really can't get to sleep. Yeah. With the feels. Yeah. Uh, and they have that uh, L-theanine stuff in it or whatever. Those things, if I if I like take a couple drops of CBD or whatever, or if like I know that I'm wired because I've been playing games and I'm like it's gonna take me two hours to get to sleep. Yeah. Uh, the melatonin gummies Ooh. with that stuff like. The only thing that sucks is in the morning, if I like, get woken up too early, like my wife gets up or the cats are annoying, mm. I feel like shit for like an hour, like groggy as fuck. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be careful with uh, how you put yourself to sleep. Yeah, you gotta actually go to sleep once it starts hitting you. Because a lot of times I'll take it, not expecting it to hit me for like 90 minutes, and then it hits me in like a half an hour, I'm like, ah, I'm not ready to go to bed, and you power through it, and then you're fucked. You're in no, this weird like, like insomnia state. That's what happens with those people that take actual sleeping pills yeah. that accidentally stay up to them. They literally sleepwalk for hours. Yeah, I mean, that's how getting high on lewds used to work is uh, <laughs> you just fight the sleep and then, then you're fucking I had a friend's dad sailing. who was like, wake up in the neighbor's pool. Uh, so be careful out there. Yeah. With, especially with prescription stuff. Yeah, what's the, what's the real dangerous one? Um, Ambien? Ambien, yeah. Be yeah. careful. Don't take it on airplanes. No, I've got plenty of stories about my friends doing that. I, I stay away from sleep pill stuff. Scares yeah, the shit out of me. Ambien is terrifying. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> in, in bad news for people who like terrible food, though, the latest famous name to fall victim to the COVID-19 pandemic is Marshmallow Peeps. Well, yeah, uh, good riddance. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Those are the horrible tasting, sticky, and horrendous marshmallow candies, which are usually shaped like baby chicks. Uh, they will not be releasing their usual seasonal variants for Halloween or Christmas this year. I didn't even know the Christmas ones. I saw the jack-o'-lantern ones. They have uh, quite a roster. So no ghosts, no jack-o'-lanterns, no monsters, no black cats, no snowmen, no gingerbread men, no Christmas trees, and definitely no peppermint stars. The war on Christmas is starting early. <laughs> It starts in September now. Yeah. Uh, now you can still get the normal yellow peeps, but if you're into this shit, it's going to be based entirely on what they look like and not the taste. So I doubt you'll be okay with yellow peeps in autumn and yellow peeps after Labor Day. Get the hell out of here. Those are an Easter candy. Yeah. We, uh, all the peeps heads know that. Nobody puts on white after Labor Day. Nobody eats yellow peeps after Labor Day. Ugh. Ugh. God, get it out of here. Anyways, yeah. uh, yellow peeps, they're obviously for Easter. You need to keep them where they belong. Yeah. On the on the, the the date of Christ's resurrection, I I honestly do not understand how peeps are still a thing. They're disgusting. They are the worst sweet in yeah. existence. But then again, there's like de there's like ten percent of people out there who fucking love them. It's like the people who uh, like I love cilantro, but there's a lot of people who think cilantro tastes like chemicals or like soap. Well, that's actually uh, there's like a biological reason for that. Mm. It's like. I can't remember why. I think it's like an enzyme that only some people produce. The only reason that that isn't tied to peeps is because they haven't done the research because no one cares. Yeah, but it's like everything about them is wrong. The, the, texture, the texture on the outside yeah, and the inside. And, yeah, but it's two terrible <laughs> textures. Yeah. Like it's it's sort of like crunchy. It, it's sharp. And uh, it tastes like it tastes so artificial. It's like just eat a fucking marshmallow. Yeah, just toast Normal the Normal marshmallow. marshmallows are delicious. They're fine. Even cereal marshmallows I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, moving on from disgusting candy versions of birds to real live birds, which are real. Here's 10,000 ducks. There they are. And no, they're not on their way to go fight like a grizzly bear or something to, <laughs> to settle a bet for someone. They're going to fight Logan Paul. <laughs> yeah, Logan Paul versus 10,000 ducks. <laughs> that would be amazing. Why hasn't he thought of it? I, it would be interesting. I'd feel bad for the ducks, but I think the ducks have a good shot there. 10,000 ducks. I mean, look at this shit. It's a lot of ducks. Yeah, Jake Paul versus 10,000 duck-sized horses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, 10,000 ducks is actually apparently what some rice farmers in Thailand 
use in place of pesticides. Mm. After harvesting the rice, which happens like three times a year, the rice farmers, they call up the duck farmers and they have them just unleash a truckload of young ducks to go wild out there in the rice field like a big old buffet, mm. devouring everything in their path and flattening the ground underneath them for good measure. Uh, it's apparently a mutually beneficial arrangement for both the rice farmers and the duck farmers. And it's also like pretty cool to look at and kind of hilarious. Like that's just so many ducks. Yeah, uh, I would assume that they shoot and eat the ducks afterwards since they have so many. Well, after they've fattened up, because they, they'll take the ducks around like a whole area to all the different farms. Yeah. Ducks get all fattened up and healthy. And then I think they, they take them to go like produce duck eggs because they eat a lot of duck eggs mm -hmm. in Thailand. Maybe slaughter a few ducks for meat. But those ducks get to live a really cool life before that happens. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, they get to sow their wild oats all over the place. Yeah. Eating, eating pests, eating old old rice shoots. They got it so good, those ducks. They do. And in other animal news out of Southeast Asia, a man misplaced his phone and found it a day later in the jungle behind his home, only to find that... Uh, a monkey had been the one to steal it. And that monkey had taken a ton of photos and video, including a few selfies. And now that monkey owns the copyright. Yeah. And there's going to be a court case for years. Yeah. Uh, the monkey seems to have really enjoyed the whole experience. And honestly, scientists should probably be handing out cheap cell phones to as many monkeys as they can anyway. Yeah. Uh, just be careful with the photos they take because PETA and Wikipedia might... Uh, you know, take it through all those lawsuits yeah, that I just spoke about. Just years and years of crippling lawsuits. Who's gonna, who owns those photos? Is it the scientists? Well, actually, the monkey owns the photo. Well, it's, I think that if they did this experiment, they would be like, yeah, just, it's the monkey, it's fine, it's the monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's science. Yes. But yeah, they should, they should give, this monkey was like having a blast with this phone. Mm -hmm. Like, and we don't only have a few examples of this, like, just get all, just a bunch of old shitty cell phones, go into like downtown Bangkok, just toss them into the crowd of monkeys that are harassing everyone. One of the everyone. most popular TikTok accounts, I guarantee you, within a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just set all the all the phones to, like, automatically upload to, like, Google Photos. You got yourself yeah. a bottomless And you can content. track them. Yeah. Yeah. It's got location tracking built in. Yeah. There you go. The monkeys are going to be like, oh, look at that Android. Green bubble. Ew. Got my iPhone. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just hope they don't start pranking. Yeah. Yeah. And anyway, moving on to paranormal news. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Or rather, uh, Holly McRae Blair, a self-described witch, she passed away recently in Idaho, and her obituary has attracted uh, some attention on account of it being hilarious. Here it is. Holly Blair exploded into glitter and bats on August 17th, 2020. She is survived by four spoiled cats, two stinky dogs, three bad birds, a turtle, and an utterly useless frog named Fred, as well as three children and a husband of little to no importance. Her remains will be interred under a tree with the ridiculous multitude of animals she rescued, both wild and domestic. Her future plans include drinking beer with Terry Pratchett and flying across the moon on her broomstick on Halloween. She has also promised to communicate with us from beyond the, uh, the cockatiel psyche. We ask that everyone carve extra jack-o'-lanterns on Halloween this year in her honor. All hail the Wicked Witch of Juniper Road. Cool. It's probably like, I mean, it's sad that she's gone, but she would have hated this Halloween. Yeah, it's not, it's not you don't want to live through a Halloween like That's this. That's probably, like, I, I don't know how she died, like what it was. Depression. Like, it, yeah, it had to be. She a had broken to, heart. She had to be bummed out as like the summer progressed. And it's just like, it's not happening. fuck, Halloween ain't happening this year, is it? Mm-hmm. No trick-or-treaters. Damn. Hmm. Uh, we're not sure whether Holly Blair was actually a witch or just really into Halloween, but we do know that over in New Jersey this week, thousands of people witnessed a goddamn UFO with their own eyes just floating up there in the sky. Look at that. The flying saucer shape, the beams of glowing light in the center. That's a UFO if we've ever seen one. Yeah. And the sighting was so extraordinary that, as you can see, people were literally pulling off the highway to get a better look at it. So, checkmate, skeptics. I mean, yeah, look at that. It's it's it, it's a UFO. But, unfortunately, it turns out that this unidentified flying object was actually the Goodyear blimp. An identified flying object, which uh, nowadays apparently features a big bright LED screen on the side. Yes. Uh, so, that's what was lit up. It was hovering over the New York Giants versus Pittsburgh Steelers game. And at a far enough distance under the right lighting conditions, I mean, yeah. You could definitely mistake that for a flying saucer. Sure. But unfortunately, it is not. Which And what's weird is like, now that I've seen it, I'm like, oh yeah, it looks exactly like a UFO. But I don't think anything like this has happened before. It probably didn't even occur to you that blimps are roughly the same shape like as flying saucers. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's interesting. But given everything else that's going on, people probably just 
right now really want to see some aliens out there on the horizon mm -hmm. who are here to either save us from ourselves or just put us out of our misery. I think th this might be a thing because uh, I'm, I'm sure that you know that games are going on, but without you know people going there and like the lights of the stadium and the roar of the crowd and everything, you're just like, what the fuck is that? Like yeah. if you're more aware of it, then it'd be like, oh well, yeah, that's a blimp because of the baseball game that's happening. Yeah. I love it, like uh, once people figured out that it was. <laughs> there's like so many comments on Twitter, like, nah, that's just what they want you to think. Like people are like, no, I know what I saw. Yeah, no, it's a, I know what I saw. It's a flying saucer that has like the illusion of a blimp around it. Yeah, that's how they get around. Yeah, dirigibles. Dirigibles. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that damn Hindenburg, we'd be we'd getting be around. around, around yeah. yeah, no problem. Cruise ships in the sky mm -hmm. require very little energy. <laughs> it takes a lot longer to get where you're going, but the whole time, the the point. Great view. The point you're is flying the in luxury. Yeah. yeah, you're flying in luxury. You don't take a cruise because it gets somewhere fast. Mm -hmm. You take it for the all, all you can about eat and drink buffet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, speaking of, uh, you know, all that, uh, here's some Florida anti-maskers parading through a Target store yelling at people to take their masks off while Twisted Sisters, We're Not Gonna Take It, plays on a Bluetooth speaker. Here you go. Yeah. And actually, the other angle of this nonsense recorded by the anti-maskers themselves is actually even cringier. It seems like they were really hoping for people to react positively and enthusiastically to their whole stunt, but pretty much every normal person caught on video is just rolling their eyes and looks like they just want these people to go away. Yeah. Fuck off. There were a few people who were like, yeah, all right, right cool. But uh, yeah, in general, everyone's just awesome. like, the fuck is going on? Is this one of them flash mobs? I thought oh, we stopped doing that. Did you see the, the, it was hyper cringe, this Karen video? Because the headline is like, Karen goes off on kid at McDonald's for ordering Travis Scott burger. But it is like, the kid ordering it is, he was definitely two or three years ago, the same kid that like jumped up on a thing being like, I want Szechuan sauce. Pickle rack. He walks in and like takes his mask off. No, not wearing a mask. Just walks in and he's like, yo, Cactus Jack sent me. And like starts like quoting all this Travis Scott shit. And then starts oh. filming the lady. And the lady just like, finally, he's like, can you stop filming me? Oh, we got a carrot. No, like. Yeah. And then, <laughs> they, then he starts getting yeah. in an argument with an older man. And like, it's, it's the worst video I've ever seen this week based on the Karen subgenre. Well, that's not a Karen. That's. That's a person reacting uh, in, I know. A, in a normal way to, I, being, to an annoying display in front of them. I agree with the Karen, except she did take her mask down to yell, which defeats the purpose. It does. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, no one's perfect, but uh, what, what do they say? In Nobody's the, nerfing. What do they say in uh, Am I the Asshole posts? Uh, everyone sucks here. ESH. Hmm. Whatever. Anyways, uh, this virus, it's clearly never going away. Never going away. Nope. Uh, do you see the shit about the CDC? Uh, the, the new guidelines and the new like testing stuff, uh, they did not approve that. That was uh, posted on the website without their approval. Cool. I don't know how it got there. I don't know how it got there. Uh, anyways, we just really wish the Goodyear blimp was a UFO. Yeah. Just fly up over the Empire State. I'm surprised and some like uh, MAGA Trump supporter hasn't shot that thing down yet. Because Trump, like, he rail rallied against, the, against Goodyear like two or three weeks ago. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Why... What was that? I, don't I don't even, even fucking remember. remember. I can't. Like, there's so many stupid comments. Oh, I think it was because Goodyear was like, you can't wear an All Lives Matter pin or something. Oh, yeah. I think they, like, banned MAGA hats. Yeah, 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 Some yeah. shit like that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Whatever. Anyways, we got some headlines. But before we get to the headlines, this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix, where I got this polo shirt. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a I have polo one in shirt. green. The yeah. exact same one in green. Yeah. I didn't own a polo shirt. And I'm like, you know what? Time to time to upgrade my wardrobe with a polo shirt. I'll wear my green one around Christmas and we can yeah. <laughs> we'll look very festive. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if every clothing store that you shopped at had only your size, what styles you like, and at the price you want? Well, Stitch Fix is a company focused on making that happen. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling company that makes getting the clothes you love effortless. It's a completely different way to shop that's all about you every time. To get started, go to stitchfix.com slash weird to set up your profile and they'll deliver great looks personalized just for you in your colors, styles, and budget. 
You pay a $20 styling fee for each fix, which is credited towards anything that you keep. You schedule at any time. There's no subscription required. Plus, shipping, returns, and exchanges are easy and free. Stitch Fix does the hard work for you, making great style effortless for everybody, including men, women, and kids. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com slash weird. And this episode is sponsored by Bespoke Post. As we come out of this new normal version of summer into this new normal version of autumn, <laughs> Bespoke Post is here with customized Box of Awesome collections guaranteed to upgrade your life. Um, we've talked about Box of Awesome before a bunch of times. Uh, previous boxes have included cool stuff like uh, cigars, cocktail kits, uh, travel and outdoor gear. Bespoke Post only sends dudes and people who like dude stuff the best stuff every month, no matter what you're into. Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware to cooking tools and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. To get started, take the quiz over at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. Plus, quizzes are fun. Mm -hmm. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only $45, but it has over $70 worth of gear inside. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter our code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com code weird, and you'll get 20% off your first box. Now, let's get into the weirdest headlines from around the world from this week. Maskless man escorted from Disney Studios while misquoting A Bug's Life. Yeah, he was really trying to rally up the other well, uh, it's, attendees. It's like the Target one, where they were like, I think the way they picture it in their head is like... They're going to be like the Pied Piper. Yeah, they're gonna, and everyone's going to be like, you know what? Yeah, he's right. Let's yeah. all walk behind him. Let's let's make the crowd get bigger. As we, uh, yeah, and he literally he was like quoting misquoting a scene from Bugs Life where like, like they it's talking about like one ant is weak yeah, but all ants make it strong or yeah, something like that. But he's referring to like not wearing a mask at a fucking theme park. That is, it's like Disneyland of all places. Like you do not want to fuck with like their no, rules. He'll be ba he's probably banned for life. Like yeah, they don't and they he's don't at Disney World. Yeah, Disney World. But like they, Disneyland is not open. <laughs> like. They don't, like, there's literally no way you could break a rule at Disneyland, even to prove a point, and have it have any effect on their bottom line. It is literally the most popular vacation destination in the fucking world. Yeah. And the thing like, that sucks <laughs> is, like, I mean, I, I read at least one article, I think, said that he is with his wife and two kids. Yeah, he, his, like, son's in the video just, like, Damn. Yeah, and guess what? Now their fucking dad can't take him to Disney World ever again. Yeah. I mean, that's too bad that son wasn't just a couple years older because he could have just picked up his dad and uh, Walked him out. done the, the large now, adult son. if he was playing a little bit of 4D chess, say, you know, well, you know, we already t told the kids we'd bring him to Disney World this one time. We can't go back on it. But, you know, me and your mom, we're not getting along <laughs> yeah. too well. The bills are piling up. Uh, we're not going to be able to go to Disneyland ever again or Disney World ever again. Yeah. So, but I don't want to tell my kids yeah. That it's that I can't do it. So I'll just get myself afford. banned. So yeah, I'll get the family banned so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> it's uh interesting, but I don't think this guy was smart enough to think that far ahead. No, he had like a he was wearing like a, a muscle man shirt despite being overweight. He had uh, a luscious, beautiful yeah. mullet like the one I, I think, have. Here. I think he genuinely thought this is going to be some like I'm Spartacus situation where everyone <laughs> takes their masks off one by one and they all clap. Yeah, Mickey and Mouse comes like, out, takes the it takes the hat yeah, off. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? You're right. You're right. I quit. All the kids are like, ah! <laughs> Mickey Mouse is a lady. No. <laughs> Uh, anyways, anti-maskers forced to dig graves for COVID-19 victims in Indonesia. Good. Good. It's, uh, yeah. I'll let, you know, it's it's tough punishment, but it's fair. Yes. If you're not taking this shit seriously... You should well, see the repercussions maybe, of your actions. Maybe you'll take a little more seriously if you're out there digging graves. Yeah, well, that's a... a it's a huge problem with also here in the United States because... You hear 200,000 people dead, yeah. and you're not seeing mayhem, destruction, despair, and overflowing emotions. You're not seeing the families on TV clutching each other and crying. You're yeah. Not, you're not seeing very, the police tape. You're not seeing, like... It's very abstract. Yeah. Like, uh, even at, like, its peak, like, I think the biggest thing was, like, in New York City when they had to do, like, mass graves um, on, like, that graveyard island that they have there, and also, like, all the the refrigerated, refrigerated trucks? trucks all over the place because like 
there, yeah, there was like a month where there's just like more bodies than anyone knew. But still, like everyone in the whole country is so disconnected unless they have like a very close family family member that like yeah. died from it. Uh, it's it's just you feel as it, it just doesn't hit the same way, which mm-hmm. is unfortunate because it makes people react in a way that. Uh, they probably shouldn't be by doing anti-mask shit or not caring about their fellow man or stuff like that, despite the fact that it's very real and 200,000 people have died as a result. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway. Police arrest man after he jumps his car over drawbridge in Detroit. Fuck yeah. Let him go. Yeah. I think Cool crime. Exactly. (laughs) He must have like really needed to get somewhere quick because it was like, yeah, the drawbridge was was opening up. They should have stopped right there after he did it. You know what? Fine. Like he wasn't like even running from the cops. Like this was before anyone. He just really needed wanted to go over that bridge. He tried to jump it. And he apparently did, but he like busted all of his tires and then like ended up spinning out and crashing into like a toll booth. That was anyone harmed? Uh, I mean, the toll booth ends like uh, people's lives were put in danger. But well, okay, he so, did pull off that sick jump. Yeah, did he not? I think it's a cool crime. If yeah. he, as long as he pays for the repairs to everything. Yeah. Then I think it's fine. Yeah, like I didn't even think it was possible. Like I, when I saw this, I was like, "Oh, so did he fall into the fucking river and die?" And they're like, "No, he he made the jump. Yeah, it destroyed his car, but he made the jump." Now, going forward, this happens again. Not a cool crime. No, this is one of those crimes where like one person gets away with it every ten years, mm-hmm. and then if you copycat, no longer cool because now you are putting people's yeah. Lives the only in person allowed to do this now is Ken Block. Mm, yeah, because that would be sick. Yeah, but then they. Be all set up with safety harnesses and yeah. closing the streets down. Oh well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, there was a video not too long ago. A bunch of I think they were TikTokers that uh, uh, the bridge was going up and they ran to the center and just oh sat my on god, it. yeah, in it Chicago, looks fucking terrifying. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I, that yeah, they they got to the end and like just hopped over onto the side, which was now like, like the vertical. top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're just sitting. There. Yeah, I was like, fuck that. Like, it looked terrifying. Yeah, and it's also illegal. What do you? Yes, doing? exactly. Um, Anyways, <sighs> woman who cut off own hand in insurance scam jailed with complicit partner. This woman in uh, Slovenia, a very an attractive woman who is now maimed by herself. She she took out a bunch of insurance policies and then like literally a month later was like, oh no, my hand, I was trimming trees and I, and I just cut my hand clean off with this circular saw that I was using. Oh my gosh. Wow. S- stepbrother, I cut my hand off. <laughs> Uh, but it, yeah, I'll, like it, like literally right after it happened, the police were like, uh, "I don't believe you." And yeah, she gets nothing. Uh, she was the whole, and like all she would have gotten out of it was a million dollars, which like I feel like a lot of people who are missing a hand would gladly pay a million dollars <laughs> to have a hand back. Mm, like, I don't know. That's a tough question. Having only one hand is just—it's annoying. Like, which hand though? Doesn't matter. Like, the, there's so many things that you use two hands to do. Like you can't even button your shirt. You can't open your pants. Like there's a million like, dollars though. Yeah, you can't tie your shoes. Mm, million dollars though. You got me thinking. That's a quandary. Yeah. I, I mean, well, so this person got nothing. Yeah, but it's more about the the thinking about what you could add. I guess. <laughs> You'll be thinking about it all prison sentence long. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd rather lose. I think I'd rather lose a foot than a hand. No, no, no. I'd rather lose a hand. The hands are way more useful though. No, but the foot keeps you balanced. Let's think about this. If you, mm. lost, if you lost your hand, you'd never be able to play video games again. Mm. And there's a way. I mean, probably with that There's word. at least one or two people that are missing hands and feet that are watching this right now that are very angry with us. That's true. And I'm Mi- sorry. Microsoft does have that, like, that device for uh, people to, like, rig up their own controls. I think I'm on the uh, safe side here because I said that I would take the money and you were like, no, not even for a million dollars would I do that. Someone's I, yeah, just no. pounding the keyboard with their stump right now, oh, so yeah. angry at you. Yeah, well. I'd take the money. If you're going to do it, uh, maybe space out your insurance policies yeah. and uh, you know, do a better job making it look like an accident. <laughs> this is not legal advice. This is illegal advice. <laughs> You're mad at Elliot, not me. <laughs> Pound out an angry comment on your keyboard. And let him know. Uh, moving on, though. You can now rent the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile for your proposal. <laughs> Only for a proposal? Yeah, for free. Uh, like, uh, as long as you're doing a proposal and you, you sign up on, like, the waiting list, they will drive the Wienermobile out to, like, where you are. Do you and... consummate the marriage by driving the Wienermobile through a tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, she's going to say yes when she sees that Wienermobile. <laughs> 
Like, I, I, can I, I stand behind it like this? Whoa! <laughs> I love this because like this gets big enough. Like women who are out there with their boyfriends, they're gonna mm-hmm. like see just by coincidence. They'll see like the Wienermobile driving on the highway and be like, "Oh my god, is today the day? Is mm-hmm. he gonna do it? Oh yeah, is he yeah, yeah. Pop yeah. the question. That Wienermobile is everywhere. Yeah, I, yeah, it gets around. Yeah. In fact, there might even be more than one Wienermobile. Dare I say. Oh, <laughs> Elliot, don't go saying that because people are going to start up a conspiracy theory. Yeah. I'm also starting to think there's more than one Santa Claus. How does he go to every mall in the country? And then every Those house Those are his in helpers. Mm, I don't know. Mm. I have questions. Airbus redesigns A350 center console because pilots keep spilling coffee on critical instruments. Oh, oops. <laughs> Put a lid on it. And it's like, it's bad. It doesn't just take out the instruments. It literally kills the engines when yeah. they spill coffee on it. And the whole problem is Airbus designed tiny cup holders for the cockpit that you can't fit like any cups in. So pilots... Why are they just get a tumbler? I don't know. The pilots are just like, they've been putting their coffee just like loose on the fucking dashboard of the plane. Just get a a, tumbler! It's a big enough problem. They're like, we have to redesign the center console on all of these planes or someone's going to fucking die. Nice. You should get the one that you set it down and you can't knock it over. Yeah. Get like, yeah. Design a cup. Maybe just do that. Or, like, I mean, back in the old days, kids, listen up. There used to be, you could buy separate cup holders that you'd hang on the windowsill or something like yeah. that. Just get one of those and just tape it down anywhere. Or get the pilots those those hats that have the, the like, yeah, yeah, cup yeah. holders in it mm-hmm. and the straw that comes down. That's the problem. Pilots great, need iced great coffee. Because the hot coffee, you're going to, there's so many things that can go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's it, either too hot, you burn yourself, then you're, whoop, the plane goes down, yeah. or you spill it because the lid's off, or you, burn it, yourself, or you yeah. sit there too long, and then it's then it's cold, but it still doesn't taste good because it was hot. That's yeah. why iced coffee is superior. I mean, I generally prefer hot coffee because I, I just, I, I make it and I drink it, mm. and that's it. But yeah, and that's in, in the situation you're talking about, iced coffee, probably better. Mm-hmm. And then you could do the, actually do the helmet, too. Yeah, there yeah. You go. There you go, pilots. There you go, Airbus. Saved yeah. you a billion dollars. Free money. Billion dollar Lululemon under fire for promoting resist capitalism. <laughs> and the billion dollars is really underselling it. This, this women's activewear company is worth $45 billion. And they had like a, some yoga workshop or something about like, it's called like resist capitalism. And people are like, the fuck These are you These pants doing? cost $90. Like $150 yoga pants, yeah. like assembled by children in Southeast Asia. And... Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I don't know why people are getting so mad at us. I thought socialism was, like, cool now. <laughs> <laughs> we just ran a thing through a buzzword finder. Yeah, they're all their, like, their trend advisors is like, all right, for the fall collection. Yeah. The hottest thing right now is hating the police and resisting capitalism. Yeah. All the young people fucking hate capitalism. All Capris are bastards. <laughs> Our new ACAP collection. Yeah. I hope they do. I hope they keep this up. Dan Snyder says Washington football team could become permanent name. And there's nothing really wrong with that, in my opinion. Yeah, it's... I I love the... uh, It's Am I wearing the hat? Yeah, LA football club. It's soccer. Yeah, in soccer, it's like super common. Yeah. Um, Yeah, plenty of of well-respected soccer teams throughout the world are just the name of the city (laughs) and football club. And that's normal. Washington football team is, you know, it might seem a little strange, but I think it's great. I love that they they panicked. Like, They're selling merch too with it on it. Oh yeah, no, yeah. and it's and it's selling really well because yeah. it's like a meme. But it's also their their graphic design is like actually pretty good on it. Like yeah. it's it's a good look. I I just love that they like they, your your football mascot doesn't have to be an animal or doesn't have a race anything. of people or or anything. I just love that like the Redskins name was getting shit on hard for like at least the past, like the, for the past few decades, but especially like the past five years, especially where it's just like constantly had to be an annoyance to these people. And I think it's so fucking funny that no one at the organization thought to maybe like hire a team to come up with some like backup names just in just case. Just in case. Just in case there's like massive unrest across the country one day over like multiple police shootings of black people. Uh, and and they need a new name real quick to change it. Like they had they had no contingency plan. They're just like, uh, okay, so we'll get rid of it. But um, fuck. Uh, well, we're just gonna temporarily call it the Washington Football Team. We'll figure it out. I yeah. don't know. I think it's fine. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? The only time I need a goofy animal or a mythical creature part of a team name 
is in the XFL, mm -hmm. owned by the owned Dwayne the Rock. Rock Johnson. <laughs> it's coming back. Coming back. Third time's a charm. <laughs> yes. If anyone can save this franchise, Dwayne the Rock Johnson can. And if it doesn't work this time, you have to put all of the merchandise and the players onto shipping containers and sink them in the middle of the ocean. Yes. We cannot let this escape. It's cursed. Yes. It's cursed. Throw it in a volcano. Yes. <laughs> America is facing a monkey shortage as demand skyrockets for COVID-19 research, experts say. Well, there's a ton of them overseas that are stealing people's cell phones. Yeah, like, I, yeah, it's a big, we've covered this, but over in like Bangkok and other Southeast Asian major cities, mm -hmm. uh, the monkeys are, they're a real problem right now. They have fewer tourists around to throw food at them or to steal food from. And uh, this is the problem. they're Peta, having a real bad time. PETA went out there and bitched and moaned for decades and now look where we're at. We can't cure COVID because we yeah. got no damn monkeys, no monkeys to test, to test on. on. We got to test it on people. And uh-oh, no, they're dying. And Wish the monkeys monkey. are fucking killing each other anyway because there's no tourists to give them food. Yeah, this wouldn't be hard. Just go go into the center of Bangkok with a net and just throw it. And like, boom, there's your vaccine monkeys. Got a bunch of fresh monkeys. Give them some cameras while you're at it. See what they do with them. Yeah. Cool vlogs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah film some vlogs to fund the vaccine research. Yeah, there you go. It, uh, it's a... The whole thing is... It, it, it pays for it, itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. There's a free one, scientist. <laughs> Trump suggests he would negotiate a third term as president because he's probably entitled to it. Yeah, his, his, he said this at a rally. He's like, he's like, well, yeah, I should probably get a third term because, like, they were so unfair to me during my first one. So, like, first one doesn't, doesn't, doesn't really count. I should get a redo term. Yeah. Uh, also what today, you he... Uh, Pitch that bill about uh, the public school, way too left leaning. Uh, yeah, we're gonna start teaching patriotism in schools, <laughs> the real history of America. Yeah, I love like conservatives have spent the last forty years bitching about like liberal indoctrination at like schools, like from like kindergarten to college. Yeah, and they're like, that's bad. By the way, also here's our like literal like conservative indoctrination program designed by the Republican Party. Yeah. Like, it, it's fucking wild. No, nothing bad ever happened in America from 1776 on. Yeah. I also love, like... And even 1492 to 1776, you know, a bit wishy-washy there for a while, but everyone yeah. came down. They had a turkey dinner. Everything was fine. Ipso facto, George Washington. Yeah. And it, it's also funny. It's like our public school system already, like, jacks off this country's history so oh, yeah. much. Like, yeah. people don't learn anything about, like terrible things this country is responsible for. It's a, it's a big reason we are where we are today is people grow up just thinking America is like infallible and has never done anything wrong. And But it's not enough. They, they want to... Do it even more. They want to make it even more uh, just like a fawning, uncritical look at the history of the United States. I'm not, I'm not bringing anything new to light here. This book's been out for 35 years, but read Howard Zinn's uh, The People's History of the United Trump, States. Trump, like, America. specifically shit on that book. I saw the uh, 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 You Can't Have Progress or You Can't Stand Still on a Moving Train or whatever yeah. uh, from that book or from Howard Zinn trending on Twitter, and I was like, yeah. oh, geez, what's happening? And then it opened it up, and it was all about the fuck. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, hey, that's <laughs> technically an endorsement for that fucking book. Yeah. And it is good. There's a... If you have Amazon Prime, there's a... I think it's only one part of it, but there's like a a, a, a recreation of the book. Oh, like a documentary? Yes. Not like a documentary, but like a, a, a what do they call it? Audio? A dramatization oh. of, of the book. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But it's only like part one. You have part two, they don't have on there for some reasons. You have to buy oh. it, or rent it or whatever. Well, yeah. The book's also like your local library's digital collection probably has like 700 copies of it. Yeah, it's real cheap. It's like, like I said, it's like 35, 40 years old. Yeah. So it's, you can get it for like five bucks on Amazon. Yeah. It's really good. And it'll be, you'll be like, wow. Wow. Are we the baddies? <laughs> yeah, there's a whole lot in that book about uh, unionization. Uh, yeah. Uh, how uh, how uh, teenagers came to be because of uh, workers' rights laws. Yeah. Because uh, the teenagers weren't a fucking thing yeah. until like the 50s. Because we just send them into like the fucking sweatshops yeah, at like at eight, nine. nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Teenagers didn't even fucking exist outside of name alone until like the 50s. Yeah, just the the entire story of the American labor struggle is like especially just like it's it's fucked up that it's forgotten. Like yeah. literally like you know how the rest of the day, the rest of the world celebrates May Day. Mm -hmm. the May Day originated in the US. I believe it was like Chicago and the US government was like, mm, "Nope, too communist. Uh, what if we have 
Mm, Labor Day. Did like you six see months later. The people on Twitter like thanking our troops for yeah, Labor Day. Thank you. What is going on? <laughs> I mean, it is a, a job, I guess, technically. But uh, yeah, no, it, it, Labor Day has just turned into like Veterans Day and Memorial Day Part 3. Yeah. For like... Yeah, be, it, it's for the people that labored at war. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. War is a labor. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's a holiday for women. The uh, only people that can go into labor. Anyways, let's see if we can cut them down to one term and then we'll see about the third. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, here's an update to an old headline. Anchorage dentist who defrauded Medicaid and extracted patient tooth while riding hoverboard sentenced to prison. Oh, and what he's, a fitting end. He's going away for a long time. It's, the hoverboard was just one detail of it. What he actually did with the, uh, that warranted 14 years behind bars was uh, he was putting people under, like fully, like... Uh, Laughing gas. General or... anesthesia yeah. uh, for like operations that didn't require it. Which is dangerous. You really shouldn't be putting people fully under unless you have to. Uh, but and isn't it a specialized skill that you have to have someone on site to like monitor it too? Yeah, well, he was doing it because uh, Medicaid has some exemption where you, the patient pays nothing for um, being put under. Hmm. Medicaid pays a hundred percent of it. So he was just like, he's like, oh, like teeth cleaning. All right. <laughs> I'll I wake mean, up in a few hours. Listen, I I I hate dentists, so like. There's been, I had to get a root canal a couple of years ago, and I was like, dude, is there any, like, do you guys do the putting under thing? Mm-hmm. Like, no. No, you just sit there. No, it's actually quite up. dangerous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fine. Yeah. So, mm. uh, yeah. That's what's happening to him. Well, uh, good riddance. And another update for you. White professor who pretended to be black resigns from George Washington University. There you go. She waited, like, a good week, though. She's like, hmm, maybe, like, I did apologize. Maybe I can get away with this. Uh, I but, hadn't uh, seen her picture before when we brought this up. Uh, Rachel Dolezal, you know, she yeah, she put more effort into it than this. Yeah, this lady was like brazen. Like she really doesn't look black at all. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, she, she just what claimed that she had like a skin condition or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird, but it's it's one of those things. Like if someone tells you they're black, like. You're not going to immediately be like... No, you're not. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, like, why would someone lie? Why would someone lie about that? Yeah. You know, I, I've known people... I knew a guy in high school who's literally half black, and he was pale as, like, fucking snow. Yeah. And, the like, Logic. The singer Logic. Yeah. Yeah. He's black. Mm-hmm. Well, half black. Yeah. So white. it's like someone tells you that, and you're like, okay, well, sure, whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, cool. Fine. <laughs> I just don't see how she couldn't have just been interested in African-American studies and, like, just done that yeah. while saying that she's white, because she was. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But I don't know. Yeah, it's like, uh... Yeah, it's weird. I'm excited to see what she does next. Probably gonna go on Cameo like Rachel Dole is all did. There you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, fucking Jordan got, uh, the Chocolate Rain guy to say poggers on Cameo last night. Fucking Christ. Tay Zonde. Come on, Tay, you're better than that. <laughs> no, he paid him $15 for it, so... Come on, Tay, you're worth more than that. Uh, we're, we're trying to come together and pull enough money together to get Gilbert Godfrey to do it. Packers! <laughs> we'll see, though. Who knows? Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, hey, it's a long weekend. Enjoy it. Yeah. Have and, a great one. Stay, uh, stay cool out there. Fall actually starts soon, right? Like next weekend or something? Technically. Well, yeah, but... Seasons are meaningless. I am taking whatever I can get. Yeah. The good news out of the fast food industry, the movies and TV shows that are coming up, I want to be dumb and happy. That's why I'm going to watch that Adam Sandler movie. And I'm going to laugh, and it's going to be a great I'm time. I'm going to take my, my drift well and just drift off to sleep. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll figure it out when November 3rd comes. Yeah. We'll figure it all out. Man, depending on the results, I'm going to be hitting a lot of those uh, dugaritas. So... Yep. Yep. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Please watch our most recent episode of News Dump and a brand new episode of Tech News Day where, uh, uh, believe it or not, Facebook is evil. They're bad. Yeah. Check those out. Bye. Bye.